guys, Chris at Dentless Touch. Today we have a 2018 RAV4 electronic crystal blue, I don't know the name, it's a beautiful color. And we have large, extremely large damage on the deck lid. This is not gonna pop from with some plunger or some suction cup or anything like that. There is some areas that have tension, uh, we call them tension areas, uh, that I would need to restore before that dent kind of completely releases. So. Let's get started with the repair. It does have damage below the, uh, the dent, um, kind of underneath the trim. So we have to get that trim off. We have to get the trim of the deck, the deck lid off, the interior trim, and so we can gain access and get started with the repair. So welcome on board. Let's, uh, let's get started. I know you guys can't wait, and I'm gonna try my best to explain everything about this repair. So we have Dave from Windy City Dent Repair here, and I thought it'd be a great idea to uh, have him explain his approach and see if it's similar to mine. Dave, go ahead and start how you would start on this repair. Well, clearly this is some extensive damage. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is try to get the bulk of this up. I'm gonna try to use glue uh, to be the first method of actual metal movement. Um, the first place that I'm gonna go ahead and throw a tab would be right in this area here. It's gonna get the bulk of this whole thing up uh, and then I'm gonna start putting tabs in some of the deeper spots uh, to try to grab some more of that metal and kind of bring the overall shape uh, back to somewhat original form uh, after that it'll probably be crown work some tools there's great access on the bottom here uh, you can get a, a lot of different leverage points um, so you're gonna use glue for the most part for the most part in the beginning yeah I'm okay. gonna be using glue to just get the bulk and the overall shape of this damage okay. up are you gonna are you gonna try to save the emblem, or you think it's best to? Get I the think emblem that off? the metal under the emblem is gonna go ahead and move the with yeah, yeah mm -hmm. um, with the actual emblem itself. But obviously, if we need to, we can take it off or move it and have to reapply right. it. But right. um, my method is gonna go ahead and try to save uh, all of this and just leave this intact and go ahead and work it just like it is right here. Yeah. So I'm, I would use cold glue. I think I'm gonna try to pull right here. That's give me kind of a, I always like to use cold glue as a guide to see how bound up that metal is because if cold glue won't pull, then I know I have to go with something a little bit more aggressive. Um, but I would wanna pull all of this up at once though. So I'm gonna try to figure out how I can do that instead of hitting this area. Cause I think if you pull this area, it's gonna bind up this, this, uh, this lower body line area. Okay. So that's what I'm worried about. Um, it's pulling this up and then this just gets all distorted and almost never looks right uh, So I will have to just watch myself and then this is the only I would say this is the only crown and this crown will probably be the only one that would Prevent everything from moving up. You do have this area right here um, That body line which keeps the rigidity of the panel So you got to watch that area and it is low right in the dead it center is. of that I think that's where initially that's where the impact uh, occurred, Yeah, there's a little so sharp little yep a little missing paint we'll have to touch that up once we take the dent out but that is my approach that's dave's approach as you see every approach is different every tech does a different style uh dave actually done one of these about six months ago Some, yeah did you record it yeah it's, it, okay yeah, so it's, it's on, on my YouTube, channel yeah, on the youtube channel. channel there's another toyota rav4 it's gray uh almost similar damage but it's on the other side here um, but the process was still the same. Remove this lower uh, trim piece here, uh, remove the interior panel here. It allows great access to this entire area, and then it's just metal movement at that point. Yep. All right, so let's see what pulls. Keep watching.
I just let Dave spin about, well, I didn't let him. <laughs> he tried out the Stanliner Rays. I hope that's the Rays snake. Snake, I, think so. I guess, I hope it's so. one of them. You're going to the training at the end yeah, of the month. Yeah, 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 so. so here we go. But <laughs> anyway. all the terminology when we're finished. <laughs> it's this tool right it. here. He was playing around with the repair, as you're seeing, obviously. Um, anyway. Dave, what do you think about the stand line and your first initial thoughts here? I really, really enjoy uh, the way this pushes. Um, some of these like micro lows, th this part can, it, it's able to get these micro lows up and it doesn't actually, how do I say, like a sharp tool would kind of pop the low, oh, whereas this yeah. actually pushes mm -hmm. that low out. It, it just helps that metal move a lot easier. Um, I know a lot of techs have said that with these tools, it's kind of unexplainable what happens under there. Yeah, it's, they don't really it's hard, know. man. You gotta um, actually just use it. You have to yeah. use it, and mm -hmm. I, I'm a true believer of that. Like, I <laughs> haven't used these. Uh, everyone's been swearing by them, but yeah, I know obviously that there is some um, Science getting wrong, used yeah. to, mm -hmm. though, I think with the way that they're shaped. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I mean, the way that this is pushing, I really, really enjoy this. I could use a whole set. And I think, you know, we're going from the traditional, like, pushing action. A direct right. push. And with, a, with him, it's more sliding and Yeah, there's other weird. techniques. There's, there's crazy amount of techniques for these tools. We're probably only about 20% into <laughs> it. I know I am. So, yeah, I know more at the end of the month. I'll be going to Minnesota. So, But anyway, uh, the repair is coming on good. I just want to give Dave some time on the Standliner tools because I've been preaching to him that he has to get him a set. Uh, it's also tools, my first so. time with a Stucky light as well. <laughs> oh yeah, how do you like the light? I, like you said, uh, I think in one of your reviews or one of your latest videos, how you're able to kind of throw this around and it stays. Yeah, I mean, I need another, yeah. It's probably a collar on yeah, there. Yeah, that's it. I Look really do like the movability of it. Yeah. Uh, compared to the Illumidem. <laughs> yeah, right? The Fade itself, <laughs> uh, all right, so this is an honest review, guys. Um, the Fade itself, I do like Illumidem's Fade a lot yes, better. Yes, I agree. It's brighter, it shows more in I the agree. actual panel. But the usability of this, the easeability of this kind of going wherever I want it to go, that I do enjoy. Yeah, and it I reminds know you, you of can, a board. And you can do that with an Illumidat. Yes, You have to set yes. it up correctly. Yes. For a lot of the guys who are kind of like me, I think, where you just get it out of the box and just, just like, go let's get it, to yeah. work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's how I am. I didn't really mess with any of the certain pivot points, I think, on the Illumidat. Um, but the light, how light this is, is really <laughs> bad. So it, it's like Tomo metal pushing. You're trying to get more and more repairs done. You're constantly moving your light. That's why I go I think to the this stuff like a door more. Dinger's friend. Yeah, like it's the door, dinner, door dinger's tool right here. I mean, Lord, like, yeah. but you know, when I'm when I can get set up, I do like the limited fade and the brightness yeah. of the limited. Um, and then the the I only have one stuck in battery. Okay. So because I have three or four Makita batteries, yeah. I'm able to just swap out. I have the Medusa stand. So I'm kind of in limbo mode now, you know what I mean? Like this one car, like you said, door dinger, route guy, maybe doing some wholesale. That yeah. that seems to be the yeah the larger option. repairs, mm -hmm. more lengthy repairs. Yeah, um, for sure. Twenty inch illuminant, what I typically use actually just every day. Yeah, that can sometimes can be cumbersome just due to some of the cars and where you're trying to get the board or get reflection. Yeah, uh, this is, I mean, this, I agree. This is really nice. This nice <laughs> length to it. Um, it's really light. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's just the fade is a little bit more, but other than that, no complaints. Yeah, so that's the comparison, guys. Both lights are great, and I just wanted to throw that in on this video. It'll probably make this video like 20 minutes, but, <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to throw all these little tips and tricks and anything I can to add any value to what we're doing and what we're bringing in the content. So thanks, Dave, for sharing your first impressions, and let's get back on this dent. Oh, let me show you what it looks like right now underneath light. I don't think we worked anywhere in this lower part yet, so oh, you're starting to. So looks like Dave is having fun, so I'm gonna let him do his thing, give me a rest. I can do some paperwork, do business stuff. Uh, until he gets tired, I wanna go and grab a break, because it is about three o'clock. We've been working on this uh, probably since about 9.30, 10 ish. Uh, so we probably got another three hours, maybe two. Ah, no, I say three hours. I don't think we can do it in two. We just realized that as you see this line that comes down, 
Well, we literally have to create that here, so that may add time. Honestly, I've never done that, so we'll see. But uh, I'm, everything's moving nicely, so let's get back to it. Let me talk to you about what I'm doing right here. I am not trying to uh, knock down any of the high spots with the rubber part. I'm actually using, this might sound odd, but I'm actually using the vibration of the hammer and it uh, hitting the panel. And it actually is leveling out the dent um, and not, create, not deforming that contour line. I know it sounds crazy, but vibration will lift areas and just make metal kind of move back to where it was stamped at from the factory so if you don't know about it already you need to try it but that's what i'm trying to do that's the method and it's working So before I show you the finish repair, I want to go over the tools. If you want to fast forward to actually just see the end result, then just do that. But uh, a lot of you guys love me going over the tools that I use for each repair. So let's get started. So just like my last video, the dent dowel was used for leverage, not for pushing. So this is kind of how it's set up. And I just put a bolt through here, bolt through in this area and just use this to leverage. I'll put a little uh, B roll in between this. I use the double bend. Uh, when I was kind of working underneath and I used this tip. This is the Dentcraft one inch ball tip. Uh, very good tool. This is just a standard ultra dent tool, double bend, uh, interchangeable tip. Pretty simple, straightforward tool. Tool that I really like to use on this repair because of the leverage I was able to use. It. And, and normally I would need the double bend, but I was able to just use this straight, I think it's called the raised snake or uh, rounded snake tool. It's a stand liner tool that he sells. 
the perfect length, perfect uh, angle. It just worked out on this repair. I did um, get some recommendations to polish this in and it actually works even better. So I'll be doing that in the near future. So keep your tools polished is what uh, most of the guys are saying. Keep them nice, the nice finish. So anyway, this is kind of the main tool to get uh, the finishing tool. It was this one. So to get the bulk of the damage up, obviously we use glue and some cold glue, but this tool is an ultra dent tool. Single bend, little 90. It has an ability to put a little push fitting, push cap on it, uh, but this is just a standard, probably about a 24 inch, maybe the 30 inch tool. So perfect leverage, leveraging off the dent dial. I'm not gonna go into detail. This is the Stucky light that I use. Um, and I also use the Ultra Dent Tools Hail Light. I don't know if they still sell that one because this is just a three strip. I do recommend the five strip. Don't even bother with the three strip. You just need that disbursement of uh, light as much as possible. So those are the lights that I use. It was, I use cold glue in this situation to determine where the, sh the areas that were kind of bound up and the tensioned areas. So I really love and I really enjoy cold glue. Like I said before, I have not used any of the other competitors. I don't even know if they're still in business, but it's only cold glue. So I'm not saying that it's the best. I think it is though, but uh, it's Glexo cold glue. Give it a shot if you haven't already. And you already know I use the blending hammers, uh, custom made blending hammers. I'm not gonna talk much about that, but that's the you know blending hammer that I use. Oh, and the prop and lock from B&D Tools kept everything stable as we were pushing. So got to give props where props is due. Prop, prop and lock. Mm -mm. Anyway, so got to get one of these. Yeah, prop and lock. So, <laughs> so anyway, so definitely uh, get one of these if you can. I talk about it in almost every video. So it's in my go back. That's it, guys. Thanks for sticking around for the tools. Let me show you the finished repair. All right, so let me show you what it looks like. All done, about eight hours worth of work. guys that's it if you haven't already go and check out our 25,000 sub giveaway uh, it's started now and it's gonna go into May 31st so go ahead and head over if you want a chance to win either a limited light or a stucky light that I'm giving away guys so thanks for watching we'll see you on the next video and thanks for the support guys peace <laughs>